Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where we have started work on our Minmus station. Let's go ahead and a new orbital station around the moon. Oof. I want to take a look at these contracts, see if we want to get anything. We're a little bit low on funding. Repair a satellite, huh? Interesting. That's something we could do. The cash on it isn't particularly great. Attaching a new part to a satellite in orbit of the moon? Oh yeah, that's a thing we can do too! With this new patch. I forgot about that. Fantastic. I think we're not going to do any of these. Let's take a look here. This is EVE. This is a solar orbit. This is... Okay, this is EVE, EVE, and... Moon. Okay, that's something that will just happen over time. That's actually quite a lot of cash that we will end up getting there. So I'm reasonably okay with our current cash situation then. So I'd like to do a bit of a refueling mission over at the moon for the space station that's there. Now, that doesn't, of course, need to be super fueled up at all times because that's kind of going to be not exactly our primary focus is what I'm going to say. So that'll be fine. So, oh, this popped back into 4K. Fantastic. Hello, Inires. Let's swap back to 1080p. Thank you. My graphics card can't handle 4K, at least not effectively. And we are definitely done mining here. We're going to retract our drills here. This is definitely something I should set up action groups for. And for the Minmus operation, I definitely will. We can also shut down our radiators. They are no longer necessary. Once again, action groups is something I should be doing. Our inclination is already heading over towards the 90 degree angle, so that looks great. Now, we could set our space station core as our target. I think we should probably wait a little bit until it's at, like, periapsis. So, let's go ahead and warp forward a bit here before we take off. That's going to be in about five minutes. That's fine. Okay, so we'll do something like this. I mean, this is probably not going to be the right timing, <laughs> and that's okay. In fact, I'm going to wait a little longer here. Let's bring it to about uh, here-ish. Okay, let's go. So off we go. Our thrust to weight isn't the greatest. We'll pull up our landing legs, and we're just going to head off over this way. We, of course, don't need to have particularly high apoapsis height, only around 40 kilometers. So we will just park about here while we get some additional height, and we'll pos position this into a fair amount of horizontal speed as well. So that's fine. We are working on catching up with this thing. I think we'll be a little behind it, but we'll see. We could strap on a uh, a new probodobodyne. That would be interesting. But for right now, we're just looking at getting ourselves primarily height. That is what I am mostly interested in, getting our apoapsis height up high enough. But we're also getting some horizontal speed and pushing our apoapsis this way, which looks like it'll be necessary. That's fine. We should have plenty of delta V to make all of this happen. Absolutely no worries on that front. Our apoapsis height is currently about a quarter of the way there. And we'll see how good this timing is. I'm betting it's not particularly good. If so, we'll just have to do a standard rendezvous. But uh, this is the way that you should do it, where your apoapsis, once you get there, is basically exactly the same as the station with your velocity basically maxed or matched. That's what we're looking for here. And you can see here our target velocity is coming down right now. But I think our timing is off judging by the retrograde marker fading out of view right now. And that's okay. We'll see how close we are. We're currently about halfway there on the apoapsis. And of course this gets more and more efficient the more we push this out. But yeah, you can see here the target towards target marker is coming into view here. But our target relative velocity is losing efficiency on this burn and that just means that we need to let this get closer so we can see here that our separation is getting further apart 
So that is fine, but we're just going to push this up a little bit more like that. And now I kind of want to feel out what some orbital radial burns would look like in terms of getting closer. Okay, so we'd want to be anti-radial, or rather radial in. Let's go ahead and switch around to that. And let's see how that feels. Could be interesting. Yeah. That does kind of work. Kind of. So this, of course, indicates that my timing was off for sure. So we'll go ahead and go over towards prograde for now. Just regular prograde. And we'll burn, say... We'll bring our apoapsis up, 38, 39, and 40. So yeah, you can see here we're 64.5 kilometers away. That's fine. That's fine. It's actually mostly our inclination. Fascinating. Anti-normal or normal? I'm actually not sure. We'll find out. Okay. That's very interesting. That is very, very interesting. So yeah, we can see here that we actually do need to go normal. I burned that too long, for sure. I should have checked, but we didn't actually see the descending node. So, that's something. I don't know what, but it's something, all right. 0.765, okay. Yeah, that's about the best we, we get here. That's okay. Let's go ahead and at this point, or rather at the apoapsis, let's go ahead and warp there and we'll switch over to target retrograde. Actually, we're going to be in orbital prograde. And we'll just push out our orbit here. And we'll just do a bit of an old fashioned approach here. Not the fancy get the timing right approach. I knew that probably wouldn't work. But let's just go ahead and do this. This is actually very close to burning towards target. I like it. But we definitely need to accelerate here. There's no doubt about that. I mean, you can see here that we are pushing our separation a little bit closer. Mostly because this is kind of burning towards target, but... I do want to push this up. So let's get ourselves into orbit here. And we'll see what it looks like once we are properly in orbit, rather than this suborbital trajectory. So, something along the lines of this is looking good. Look at this over here. So, this position here is coming down very nicely. Our inclination is a little off, so there's only so far that we're going to be able to bring this together. But that's looking good. That is looking very good. I'm just letting it continue to drift until we get a loss of efficiency, which we're now seeing. This is about the closest that we're going to get, so that is fine. At this position, we want to change our relative speed. Actually, at this position, we want to change our relative speed by 43.9 meters per second. We will use this only for the timing here. So 43.9 is what we're targeting here. So about right there. This will, of course, be a target retrograde burn. We don't actually care about this maneuver. We'll go ahead and warp towards that. That's only 17 minutes away. Not too shabby. And over that time, our target differential will continue to come down. This is claiming 256.6 kilometers separation, but this is actually not the case. This is after another orbit or two. I'm not sure how many orbits that is. But we're going to just load in the moon there and then flip around to target retrograde. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, there's the station up there. So we're going to go ahead and burn this at T minus five seconds. And that will be in just a moment here. We're going to burn this now. And we will just bring our relative velocity down. We no longer care about this maneuver node. It was just for timing. Five, four, three, two, one. There we go. Okay, we don't actually care about being exactly 
the same target, because we're not going to 10 kilometers away. I should have flipped the other direction, now balls are hard, but uh, there we go. We'll head over, that's basically at the prograde marker, but we're not moving fast enough to actually point at prograde here. So let's, actually now we are, but let's just go ahead and turn this over, and we are going to go ahead and burn at the target. And I want to definitely adjust this. Let's go ahead and bring this up to about 5 meters per second. So something along the lines of that. How are we doing? 6.8 kilometers. In fact, we are burning towards target. We are still fairly efficiently bringing down our separation. So we will go ahead and do that. Four kilometers, three kilometers right now. 2.5. We're losing efficiency. 2.0. We'll call that good. Okay, we'll flip over to target retrograde. In fact, hang on. Let's not do that yet. Let's not do that yet. What I want to do here is I actually want to use our RCS to adjust our heading a little bit. About like that. That gets us down to 1.9 and also, conveniently, gets us right by that target retrograde marker. So let's go ahead and warp to somewhere around here. I don't actually care that much when, so we'll just warp to here. Excellent. And we will burn off this 34.2 meters per second of differential between us. And then we'll get a little bit closer. Okay, something like that. Things got very dark very suddenly there. Okay, we're currently moving a little bit too much. I overshot there. I accidentally tapped the max instead of the minimum throttle, which is, you know, very clever of me. It's definitely very dark here. We're a little bit concerned about our power levels, but we should be more than fine. We've got a lot of power on this thing. Okay, so let's get this relative velocity taken care of. Good enough. And then we're going to head over towards the towards target marker, and we're going to burn on in. And I'm just going to burn in at like 3 meters per second for right now. And then we will use our RCS to adjust that. Oh, right. We can only go up and down with the RCS. <laughs> right, I forgot about that with this model. That's okay. This is close enough. It's allegedly 1.3 kilometers, which means that I'm actually going to pull this in a little bit more. We're going to have to burn to pull this over. Like that. Much better. 0 0.3 kilometers. So we'll go ahead and warp there, and then once we get there, we will flip around to retrograde. Hopefully it'll be day side by then, because it's very dark all of a sudden. I'm actually wondering if this is that same lighting bug that we had at the KSC. It may be. We're going to go ahead and... Yeah, I think this actually is. So if that's the case, then what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to kill this velocity. It's too dark to see anything. And I think this is just that lighting bug. So we're going to bring this down like that. That's close enough. I'm going to quick save here just in case. We're going to head back to the space center to try to get the lighting to reinitialize. Hopefully this works. It did. Fantastic. So we're going to head back to the tracking station then. And we're just going to go right back to the mining module. Fantastic. So with the mining module here, it is exactly the same. Okay. And it's rendering in 4K as well. Perfect. <laughs> we'll set that screen resolution to be the correct thing. And then we'll head down towards the towards, towards uh, marker. Yeah. Well, we are actually just on the opposite side of a uh, lunar eclipse here. So I guess that's what's happening. No bug at all. This is just, the sun is on the exact opposite side of the Earth right now, and we're in the Earth, or rather, of Kerbin right now, and we're in Kerbin's shadow. So that's all that is. We're going to go ahead and burn about like this, just letting that come directly over the node there, and then we'll flip around to retrograde as we come in, and yeah, this is just pure darkness here. We should start seeing the sun peek out over here. 
I believe, over here anyway, in a little bit. That should be interesting. We're going to go ahead and warp forward a couple of minutes here as we close in. Oh, that feels like a lot. Okay. But it's not. We're fine. So we're going to bring down this target speed. And I'm definitely going to warp here until we no longer have this uh, complete darkness thing. So our target separation is now about there. Let's go ahead and warp here, and we should be coming out of this eclipse pretty soon. I'm just going to continue warping until we're out of it, because, I mean, an eclipse like this is neat, right? But uh, not helpful. <laughs> We are drifting away from the station during this time, so let's go ahead and flip over to the retrograde node, and I want to adjust this a little bit. Like that. Okay. And let's go ahead and warp here for just a little bit. There goes the station. <laughs> We can see here that we're getting pretty close. I mean, we could dock up with this, right? That's something we absolutely could do. It's just that it's very dark right now. Like, look at that. Can't even see a thing. Did the ambient light turn off? I have an ambient light boost on this. Apparently not. We are still in that eclipse for a little while. It's, uh... It's an interesting situation, to be sure. Note to self, maybe put lights on spacecraft. <laughs> we can set this docking port over here. You, you probably can't see anything. We can set that docking port as our target, and we're going to go ahead and turn towards our target. There we go. Hey, look, it's Minmus out there. <laughs> just a tiny little black dot. I like it. So we're just going to position here, and we are going to want to control from, like... This docking port, I think, and I have no idea. Oh, hello. Oh, I can't believe I actually got that in one try. That was insane. Okay, we are going to turn SAS on. And... Do we have power? Oh, we don't have power. Okay, so we have to wait until we have sun. Sure. So we're then going to definitely have to wait... I'm going to, for right now, come over to this guy, and we are going to make a small station keeping adjustment here. We are going to burn like so. Okay. There we go. And we're going to just warp over to, like, here when we come out on the other side of this orbit. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we have sunlight. Hey, I think this is sunlight over here. This is now very bright, anyway. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. Sunlight! <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, let's kill our relative speed that has built up in this time thanks to orbital dynamics. That lunar eclipse definitely made things more interesting than I was bargaining for. I thought this would be a relatively quick thing. Okay, we're now just going to burn in towards our target. We're about 130 meters out. So we're going to just burn in up over this direction. I'm going to pull it over here a little. I feel like I pulled it too far. There, one meter per second. That'll do. So in we go. And now we need to switch over to the station and align the station with the prograde marker. Much easier to do now. Station is going to waggle a bit. I'm trying to do this fairly uh, gracefully. Just let it drift on over. Until we're approximately in line. And then bring it back. About like... That and freeze physics. Okay. Physics are approximately frozen. And we're just going to pull this up over this way a little bit with our RCS if we can. Oh, yeah, we can only pull it one direction. We're going to have to do it that way. And then we can always break with our RCS. That's fine. So I'm going to bring this down to one meter per second. In fact, 
I'm going to bring it down to half a meter per second. Something like this. And then we're going to pull the node up over this way with our engine, like that. Okay, let's go ahead and warp on in for a little bit. And once we get to around 10 meters out, we'll go ahead and adjust that again. Yep, we're going to have to adjust this for sure. Okay, we'll do something like that. And then we will pull this node up over kind of like this-ish. That's not particularly accurate, but it'll have to do. Considering that we do only have the two RCS thruster blocks on this. Again, this whole system is going to be overhauled for the Minmus operation. And docking forces? I believe we have docking forces. Yes, indeed we do. Fantastic. So let's get docked in. As soon as we stop waggling. Burn it back in a bit here. Oof. Yeah, it just doesn't want to doesn't want to dock right now. Absolutely doesn't want to. It'll happen eventually. Gonna head in a little bit here. Okay. I'm actually going to freeze physics here and we'll try this again. Half a meter per second. We'll see how this goes. My bet, somewhat poorly. <laughs> okay, docking forces are rotating our craft right now. Not going to touch it for the moment. There we go. That's what we were looking for. So at this point, we are... Okay, looks like we are already processing this ore, I believe. Right? This tank is full. Uh, this tank, yep, we are processing the ore. Fantastic. So let's hop back to the Space Center now, and we'll let that process for a while. Like I said, we don't need to keep that particular setup going full time. We're going to set up a different style refinery on... Oh, hello, that's a lighting bug. We're going to set up a different style refinery on the surface of Minmus, and we're just going to fly the fuel up for Minmus. We'll do the refining on the surface. So we need to decide how we want to design that, right? Now, one thing I was thinking about is having like a landing pad on the surface. I would like to have it be a landing pad that just docks in. And you can fuel it up and then undock and lift off. Like landing on the refinery. However, that would definitely be complicated. <laughs> We would have to do, like, for example, if we had a system like that, we would have to do, like, a T-800, and for now we'll have it be empty. The T-800 would have on it, like, minimal weight, right? Absolutely minimal weight. So, not, not like that much monoprop. It would, it would need a small monoprop tank, perhaps even an external monoprop tank, because, let's see here, that's 0.56 tons. I would maybe like to have something much smaller. Let's see here. That's a drain valve, monopropellant fuel engine. Yeah, I think that uh, that's a quarter ton. That's a quarter ton. 0 0.08 tons as a cargo part. Oh, it's much cheaper as a cargo part. Fascinating. I wonder if we could attach that on the surface and detach it and stow it on the way down. That'd be that'd be a, a weird system. I'm not going to do it. I feel like that's gamey. But what we can definitely do is make sure that we have four of these guys on here for our, for our uh, command and control. That's fantastic. And then our pod would be like a uh, remote guidance unit here. We would definitely need a battery on this. Probably go for a smaller one, like a Z1K, like that. And then we would certainly have a docking port up top. Perhaps a docking port junior, like that. That might work. 
And then we would need an engine down here of some description, right? However, what I'm currently thinking is what if this is also a docking port? Flipped around and placed in like this. Although I think rather than a docking port junior, I might want to have this be a full-sized docking port. Like that. And then the actual engines... Those would be something along the lines of twitches. Or what's the fuel flow on this? Half a liquid fuel per second. Spiders might be enough on the moon. Let's see here. So spiders on the moon, we would have, say, four of them. We don't actually care about the center of thrust overlay. We would have like four of them here. Something along the lines of this. And then we should actually be on Minmus, like so. And then this would be like that. Our thrust to weight here, this would actually work, apparently. This would be very effective as just a tiny little tanker. Technically, we wouldn't need 120 monoprop in this, but I do think that that's the smallest monoprop engine, or the smallest monoprop tank. Isn't it? Let's see, that's 3 tons, that's 1.6 tons, so 1.85 in the tonnage there. Technically, this is smaller, and I would prefer this. So what we're going to do is we're going to ditch this, place this like that. Do we even want this big of a battery bank? I'm going to ditch that temporarily and see how this goes. And then mount these, like, say, here. Like that. Maybe make them in line with the engines. Like that. Fascinating. And then maybe as some form of stabilization, we would have, like, some form of legs that come off here. Like, maybe hydraulics rather than legs. So that would be like in here. We would use like hydraulic cylinders that we can adjust the uh, adjust the length on. That would be interesting. Like not like this, but we'd have like struts in here, cubic octagonals that would come in say here. And then hydraulic cylinders, like we'd need to change this height, right? But hydraulic cylinders that come in like that in the form of landing legs. So we would need to change this height for sure. I would like these to be like all the way up here. And then we would be able to change their target extension. So we would land like this, right over the docking port in theory. And then we would just lower it on down and dock it in, would be the idea. I have no idea how effective this would be. But this would be the craft that would be designed to dock up with the, with the refining facility. Which the refining facility may or may not do its own mining. I don't know about that yet. Is there a reason for it not to? I don't know. There might not be a reason for it not to. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this the Minmus Mine... Or rather, the Minmus... Uh, this is like the, the fuel tug, the fuel craft, the fuel tanker. Fuel tanker. Sure, we'll settle on that name. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop this over to the Minmus surface as is with a full tank of fuel here. And I'm just, we're, we're going to cheat it over there as a simulation. And I'm just interested to feel out what it actually feels like when it's completely full. As well as what we can actually do with it. So we're just, oh, hello 4K. We're going to pop that back into 1080p, otherwise we're never going to get any frame rate. Fantastic. And then, like I Okay, sure. Like I said, we're just going to pop this over to Minmus here. I don't really care about where we are. We'll have an altitude of, say, 50. 50 meters. So we'll set that position there, and this is just a simulation. So we will go ahead and go to... Surface Retrograde. Absolutely. 
We're going to flip this over. Ah, yes, we're kind of lacking in a reaction wheel, but we do have one in the remote guidance unit. And I feel like this is actually enough. So we're just going to position here. We're going to set our target extension to full. And we're just going to ease our way down. We're about 30 meters above the surface right now and just very slowly coming down here. So I'm just feeling out how quickly this goes. This barely burns any fuel. How much burn time do we have in this? Whole, oh, we have a lot. Our thrust to weight is 3.13. It was showing up much lower a moment ago, but I think because that didn't update properly. So that was why I maxed it there, was because our thrust to weight was showing us 0.16. But I'm pretty sure that what's actually happening there is it's because we just teleported to Minmus for the simulation. So this is definitely going to be reverted, right? A million percent. But we're just coming on in here. Now, this guy is not exactly the uh, most stable in terms of landing on the ground. It is not designed for this. And it's going to tip over here for sure. But we can see here, it is functional. So I'm actually going to lift it off here. It's a bit loud, isn't it? I'm going to lift it off here, and we're going to head into maneuver mode here. Excellent. Because my question is, how much fuel do we have to burn on this? Because we don't need to think about landing, right? Landing, we don't need to think about. We will refuel on the pad. But once we take off, we need to know just how much of this fuel is actually going to be utilized in getting ourselves back into orbit. Now, this is certainly not the most efficient thing I've ever seen, at least in terms of acceleration speed. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. We're just going to rest at prograde for now, and that'll be fine. Yeah, this seems fine so far. I mean, we've got 4,000 meters per second from fully fueled to get there. More than 4,000 meters per second. We've got almost 4,100. So yeah, if I can perfect landing on the pad, that's the question. Can I perfect landing on the pad? Are we out of power? Yeah, we're out of power. We don't actually have any uh, solar generators on this and no battery. So that's fine. And these engines don't have an alternator. But we knew that we were going to revert that. But that gave me the answers that I need. This is going to be functional. So all we need on this is a couple of very light extendable panels. And I think I'm going to go with 1x6s. I tend to like 1x6. And I think we'll just mount those right about here. Like that. This will do the trick. We have a docking port junior for docking up to the station. And I may want to consider changing that. But we have a regular docking port for landing. I may want to invert that. That said, this RCS fuel tank will make that awkward. But this thing is very lightweight, and we're not going to send this up fully fueled. It would it would be sent up like this. So yeah, I'm reasonably comfortable with that. It is, however, time to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we are going to design the mining platform for this to land on. Now that's going to be interesting, and that might have to be a multi-stage build. Might even have to send an engineer down there to work on it. That'll be interesting. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and I will see you all next time. <laughs>